Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I'd like to show you guys one of my favorite ways of weaving stretchy European 6-in-1. Um, this is a pretty common chainmail weave that's a slight modification from the very traditional 4-in-1 that's used in a lot of armor pieces and I use it a lot for like um, bracelets and really dense like uh, choker and collar style necklaces as well as a design element in a lot of our uh, chainmail like costume armor and things like that. So what we have set up here are 16 gauge 5 sixteenths rings from the Ring Lord and we're using anodized aluminum as well as stretchy EPDM rubber. So you can see here it's a really just squishy, stretchy continuous like industrial o-ring and I have five of each color in one two three four five six and eight so 40 rings set up here we'll see how far that gets us the number of rings that you'll be using is purely determined by the project that you're working on more rings will make a longer piece whereas fewer rings will make a shorter piece <clears throat> our first ring that we have here is a red one um, but that's not important. <laughs> but it has one open with six closed on it. And you can see here, I have all of my other rings set up, one open with two closed on it. In my last ring, honestly, it should probably be my last two rings, are just one open with no closed on them. <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can't zoom this in just a bit so you guys can see what I'm doing from two angles, maybe. Yeah, because I'm not bad enough about just wandering off of one camera, <laughs> I decided to throw in two. <clears throat> so you can see here, it's one ring with those six closed on it, and I'm just going to come in and close it, just like that. And what I'm actually going to come through and do real quick is to just scooch a lot of these rings out of the way. And that way the cameras will maybe have an easier time focusing. And also, this is a great way, I have found, of just scooching rings along, still keeping them in their rows, is just with the straight edge of a ruler. There we go. Okay. So, now... <laughs> we have that one ring with the six on it and you're going to butterfly it to where there's three on each side and you want them to be laying in the same direction so you can kinda of see how it's laying like that and something that's very that you want to take note of in the European style weaves is there's going to be a grain to it. So some of the rings are laying this way, while the next row is laying this way, and then this way, and then, and so it has that very repetitive alternation. And so we have our red one there. I'm going to pick up an orange ring with two closed on it. <clears throat> and I'm going, I've just picked this piece up here like this, and I'm going to hook through two. And then I'm going to come around and hook through another two and then I'm going to close it. You want to get as good and secure of a closure as you can like you don't want anybody to be able to see where that closure was and you certainly don't want it to be like wide enough to be able to fit like a fingernail or something through so quality is important and so from here we've got I'm just butterflying it back out we have the three on the one side and then the three on this side, and then the two that we just added that we're going to butterfly again. And we can kind of lay it down. And you can see they're not they're not quite wanting to lay right. So you can just take it and kind of force them around into their spot. But you can see with this one, with it being called a six in one, there there are six rings inside each one completed. <clears throat> and so that's definitely something to keep in mind. And so now I've picked up a gold ring with two closed on it, and I'm going to hook... You, you can see the pattern that these rings are laying in. I want to repeat the shape 
of how this one here is happening. So I'm going to come up from underneath these two rings and then come across the top and then down from above on these two. Which can be much easier said than done, but uh, just be patient with yourself. Practice. Don't hesitate to try different angles and ways of holding your pliers and just all sorts of stuff because what works for me may not be what works best for you. But with patience, practice, and persistence, you'll get where you're going. So you can see how that just kind of came around like that, and I'm going to close it. Check the quality of our closures, nice and tight. And just kind of butterfly those uh, rings back open. And again, the two that you, the fresh two that are added, are always going to want to like flop and be weird a bit. And that's why I usually have a tendency to like set my project back down. There we go. <clears throat> and now I'm going to pick up a yellow. And you truly do just repeat this same thing over and over again like a million times until your project is done. So, <laughs> um, but I'm going to go through it step by step the whole time with you guys and show you how to join it. And so we can actually flip it over. So if you prefer to weave this way, because see how this looks a little different than that. So if you, if you drop your piece and you get kind of mixed up, I'm going to show you from this way too. And also that's another reason why I really like demonstrating pieces with the rainbow. And I kind of recommend if you're able to go ahead and weave with rainbow the first couple of times, cause it'll let you know, you know, which, what the most recent ring you added was. So from here again, I want to follow this pattern of the way that the rings lay. So I'm going to enter in from the top and hook one, two, and then come around from the back side and hook one and then two, and then close it. That's not as good as I'd like. And I always recommend to folks to keep your closures good as you weave. It might go a little slower, but especially on a denser weave like this, it's really difficult to go back through and fix your closures after the fact. So just go ahead and do it while you're doing it. Uh, the more you practice, the faster you'll get. And so there we go. Oops. You can see how that one got added in. <clears throat> and I'm going to flip it over. And you just kind of like, you can tap it a bit, get everything nice and lined up. And I'm going to weave a couple more before I start showing you guys <clears throat> some different like troubleshooting things. So just kind of hooking through. One, two. And then one, two. I do prefer to weave from this side just because I can see <clears throat> the rings that it is going through. Whereas if I weave from the other side, I can't really, like, if I'm entering in, I can see okay on this one. And then on this side, I just kind of have to, you know, trust that it's going around. But this is an art, not a science. It doesn't matter how you get there, so long as you get the product that you're looking for, like that end result. And so the more you practice, the more you'll find your own favorite way. And then... Hooking on our purple. And closing. And so now here, this is also a great way that if you're new to this and you want to gauge how much this is going to get you, um, like how many repetitions of the rainbow you'll need, I have a ruler here that I'm just going to hold down. And I measure from kind of the center of this ring to the end of this one. So this got us, I mean, just almost perfectly an inch and a half. So if I want a seven and a half inch bracelet, I'm going to need that's one repetition, two repetitions, 
three repetitions, four repetitions, five repetitions of this color scheme. So excellent, I have just enough rings set up. But if you're doing a custom piece for somebody and they're like, oh, well, I want an eight inch bracelet, you might add in or take away a few of the colors to get this to line up, you know, well, that way um, you don't want to do like full rainbow sequences all the way around and then like a, you know, just stuck with like, well, I've got three, three rings left to do, but you know, eight colors. <laughs> And that's something you can always work out between you and the client as well. So I've grabbed my next ring and I'm just hooking through one, two, three, four. Because you could also incorporate some black anodized aluminum rings or silver ones to break up in between the repetitions of the rainbow sequence. Or you could go from the hot to cold colors and then back down to hot instead of just you know, repeating the sequence from the beginning. It's a uh, use your own creative inspiration and do whatever you feel inclined to do. <clears throat> so now I'm going to show you what it can look like if you kind of mess up a bit. So here I've hooked one on and it's like, oh, that's a bit strange. Um, how it has this pucker here. And it's because whenever I hooked it on, I hooked through three instead of just the two. And this is another reason why I prefer to view it from this side, because if you flip it over, I mean, it's a little puckered weird, but you can't really tell how much you messed up. Like, you know, uh, so I catch up my mess ups much more easily whenever I'm viewing it from this side. And so the best way to fix that is to just come to the ring that you just did, open it up. It's way too late in the day for the mailman. <laughs> and then just kind of set your rings back to how they were. And then come through and hook one, two, three, four. And close. And so don't, don't hesitate to reset. Um, and just like however many rings that you have to remove is just like, and I've used this example in other tutorials, but it's just like ripping out rows and crochet or knitting. Sometimes you have to do it to get to back to that stitch that you messed up. So it's, um, especially whenever you're new to it or if you're getting tired or it's been a long day, double check every single ring that you place because you do not want to have to come back and remove a ton of stuff. <clears throat> And we'll just continue hooking and weaving around. Now I do think, oh, I'm going to show you another way to mess up. <laughs> just to, if you hook one, then two. So you can see there how that one looks. Again, it's just going to be a little bit of inconsistency in the pattern repetition, but it's just enough that it really throws it off. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so for this one, if you don't feel like you want to remove the whole ring, you can just open it. And I'm going to get in here with my fingers and grab this rubber ring and just hook it onto that aluminum and then close. And then I'm going to add on another one. There's one, two, three, four, and close. <clears throat> and another way that, especially if I start feeling like I'm getting tired or something, I'll catch myself reverting back to just a four in one. And that is where you hook just two rings instead of the additional four and that's often what that looks like and so it just it greatly reduces the density of your armor or your bracelet or your weave or whatever you're doing 
<clears throat> and again, to fix that, you could just open up that ring, hook on one from one side, and then one from the other, and close it. And there you go. It's just like that. <clears throat> Now, if I were to come through to add an expansion ring, like um, if I wanted to extend to, to like have, if I were doing this for armor, it's gonna be a lot more than just one row thick. It's gonna be, you know, many, many rows thick. So the way that I would go about doing that, and I'll demonstrate, but then I'm gonna remove the rings because I'm specifically doing this for a client. And so they only wanted a single wide um, European six in one band. But I would take a ring that has three closed on it. And I would come in here on the side and pick up that ring. And I would count back one, two, three rings and hook through one, two, and three, and then I would close it. And see, and it's, you don't want these ones on the side kind of laying around like that. You want them just laying in a repeat repetition of what you just did. And then we would still take, instead of having one that has two on it, we'd have an open that has just one on it. <clears throat> and we would come in and I would count down not this one here but I'd count one that hasn't been added and then two three and that two and three have already been hooked through by the red and then I'm gonna hook two from this side and then I'm gonna close it so it's very much the same way that you would widen a European four-in-one band but you're just, again, making sure that there are six closed rings in each. So there you go. And that's how it would look. And then you would just kind of continue that way, kind of building and expanding. But that's not what we're doing in this project. So I'm going to take these out real quick. I'm trying to put them back where they were, how they were. And I do think now I am going to just put this into time lapse um, so that y'all don't have to wait the whole time because <laughs> it can be, you know, can be time consuming. And here on this one, <laughs> I have started chatting and it still has too many rings on it. So I'm going to open it back up if I can find my closure. Take the ring off and close it back. So, and this is another thing that I've said before, but um, never underestimate your own ability to make things more complicated than what they have to be. So it's, it, uh, it's a little bit of Murphy's Law, um, but it's, if something can go wrong, it will. And there is always another way for things to go wrong other than what you've anticipated. So again, just with patience and persistence, you'll get there.
Okay, so here we are in the last, um, like, repetition of the color scheme. And I'm just trucking along. And I really do think, guys, that I like, at least for chainmail weaving, this three-camera setup. Because it's, it's a lot easier for me to talk to y'all whenever I can, like, look at a camera. <laughs> and, like, um, I don't know, I feel like it makes it a lot more personal. Um... And, like, I'm there with you guys, maybe. Um, but staying in frame on this camera that I can see feel like is helping me stay in frame on the other camera. So now I'm coming through. I've added in my green color. And I'm adding in my light blue. And so now we're going to be using... I think, <laughs> and this might take a little bit of experimentation, but I am going to double check and make sure that it is actually enough to go around my wrist, and that's plenty. But you can't see because this one zoomed in real far, but that's plenty to go around my wrist. And so whenever you're joining the ends of a bracelet, you want to make sure that there aren't any twists in it, unless you want there to be a twist, in which go for it or which case go for it but with this one being such a nice flat band of a bracelet um i think it's nice to not have a twist because that twist happens to be pretty wide and it would get in the way whenever you're wearing it okay so we would bring these two ends around and you can see here i'm straightening up the ends to make sure that they are symmetrically butterflied you don't want both of your rings over onto one side on either end. So let's keep that nice and centered up. And I'm going to hook through this blue ring. I'm going to hook through one, two, three, four. And you can see how I have it turned, that this is all nice and straight. And I'm going to bring this end up and around and I'm going to insert from this angle because of, you can tell by the way that that ring's laying that that's how it's going to go so it's so I had four so it's five and six and I'm going to close that blue ring this is another example of how using rainbow can really help you to establish exactly where that next ring is going to go 
Um, and right there is how we would have normally joined a foreign one. And so you can see the um, inconsistency in the weave. I mean, technically, yeah, it's together, but not as perfect as we want it to be. So I'm going to grab this purple ring. And starting in front of the blue, I'm going to hook one. There we go. <laughs> and then I'm going to hook two. Mm, and let me think of a way that we can like demonstrate this well. It might be, let's go ahead and flip it around. Yeah, we can see a lot better from the other side. Um, so we're going to enter in behind the red. You can see there's this one ring that the red's been thread through. And then we're going to go to the next. So that's one, two, and then three. And I can feel it more with my fingers than anything, but you can flip it around and see where it's starting to come through on the back. So this one is going to go on that purple ring. So that'll be four. Me. There we go. <laughs> and you don't want it to thread through the other rings like that. That's incorrect. You won't only want to be snagging rubber rings. So three, four. Four, five, and six. So I feel like I made it more complicated than it needed to be by slowing it down. But you can see you want these two to stay not threaded through by the purple. And then it's one, two, three rings will be inside the purple. And so flipping over to the red, you can see, again, those will be all the ones that you've hooked through. And you'll close it, and that gives you a nice and perfect continued pattern. Now I'm actually going to remove this purple ring so that I can demonstrate that to you again, just in case um, there might be a better way of going about it. And also I've found that on the last ring, it can be really helpful to have a nice wide opening. Okay, so we're back to having only one ring joined. I'm going to take our widely opened purple, and I'm going to skip one that's been threaded through on the red, that one right there. And I'm going to go one, two, and then I'm going to pick this ring here, three. And I'm feeling with my finger on the back side of it, almost like whenever you're quilting and you're pushing a needle through, you can kind of like gauge where it's going to be by touch. But you can always flip it over, take a peek at it, and that is correct. It is coming through correctly. And then, so that's three, then four, five, and six. And so um, that really just just practice will help you get the hang of it. I do recommend having a pretty solid grasp of joining four in one before you tackle this project. And that's what it looks like, you guys. You did it, hopefully. <laughs> um, if you guys have any questions, comments, or ideas, I'd love to hear from you. If you need any help or anything, um, it can be most helpful if you take a picture of what you're doing and then send it to me on Facebook. That way I can kind of like circle and send it back to you and be like, okay, it looks like right here is where you might have messed up or, you know, something like that. Just visual aids help me a lot. <laughs> so, um... I do hope that this whole uh, tutorial was helpful to you guys. Um, please subscribe if you would like to. Uh, maybe like and share with your friends if you know some other folks who might be interested in getting into weaving chain mail. And it's stretchy, y'all. Check that out. Oh my gosh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> like, I love not having to deal with a clasp. Like, just being able to thread it on and have a completely continuous um, pattern is so nice. <laughs> um, yeah, if you guys enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, as well as participate in periodic uh, giveaways, as well as our patron-exclusive bi-monthly fairy house giveaways, uh, please check us out on Patreon. There should be a link down in the video down in the video description below um, where if you go and pledge just a dollar it puts your name in the hat for all of our giveaways um, just once for each of them. 
but uh and that's like all of our social media like facebook instagram uh deviant art everything uh you don't have to do any additional liking sharing commenting anything like that um and it also signs you up for the vip i just looked into the lights and that was really bright um <laughs> yeah if you pledge a dollar it puts your name in the hat once on everything if you pledge five dollars it puts your name in all the hats five times um and don't despair if you're not able to become a patron um you can still uh participate in a lot of our giveaways by just commenting or sharing or liking or um be sure to find us on facebook that's where i usually promote a lot of them um and then if you pledge ten dollars or more a month you actually get like a loot crate style box of uh, kits and materials sent to you every month or a gift of your choice just whichever you prefer um but yeah go check this out there and I do hope you guys liked this. I, I know I enjoyed sharing it with y'all because this was this was a weave that felt very daunting to me initially whenever we were getting started at making chainmail, but now it's one of my favorite weaves just because, I mean, it's pretty sharp looking. <laughs> so I hope y'all have a fantastic day. Give yourselves a big hug from me, and I'll see y'all around. Happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>